Hey everyone, welcome to Cherish Conversations. It's been a couple of weeks since I've seen you, but I know we've had some incredible content on here. All of it can be viewed on YouTube, but then also at our Cherish.Women Instagram page. So there's so much going on, but without further ado, I want to introduce you to my favorite human, bar none, on planet Earth, the man that I have loved for 30 years now, baby. Come on. Oh, I'm just glad you. to be in the top 10. Yeah, easy. You're not. Come you're on. numero uno. Yes. What? So we've got you in the hot seat today, and I had a literal ton of questions sent. Uh -oh. We're not going to be able to answer uh -oh. them all, but we're going to get through as many as we can. Okay. Um, but first of all, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hey, everyone. What an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. I love my beautiful bride and I love the Cherish Women's Ministry. Yeah. Uh, and I just love the, the fruit. And so hopefully today I'll be able to answer some questions and help you uh, get some great breakthrough and see God a little clearer clearer in the yes. middle of these tumultuous times. Oh my gosh. Amen to that. All right, Yagi. First and I'm wearing question. my awesome shoes. Yeah, I bought him these. These literally, is, this is Jürgen in a shoe right well, here. I thought Colorful, bright, little bit oh. messy, little bit shocking. What? Yes. Messy and shocking. Hello, yes. Mr. Nito right here. Ne well, actually, you're not too bad. Got to be honest. All right, first question. Now, this was sent uh -oh. from Padre Hansey Scott in Australia. Hansey. Scott Hansey, who went to Hillsong College with you. That's right. You guys graduated the same year, and he mm. was one of your groomsmen. Mm. Okay, he wants to ask you this question. Your best memory of Dapto, which is the town of your birth. Dapto. Best, best memory of Dapto is the kebab stand uh, at the mobile gas station. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what I wouldn't do for a kebab right now. An Aussie kebab. Yum. Yes, with lots of hummus. All right. Yeah. Okay, how is your hair so good all the time? Oh, wow. That's such a crazy Arthur question. Arthur McWhorters. I never feel like it is. Arthur, your hair is so good all the that's time. That's true. Arthur, you have amazing hair. All right. Now that the Rock Bottom Brewery has gone out of business, where is your favorite restaurant? Now, many of you girls, cherished girls, those who have heard me preach about Rock Bottom Brewery wasn't my favorite restaurant, but it was the impetus of an incredible revelation God gave me about being ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Yes. Miguel's. Miguel's? Miguel's Cochina. He loves Miguel's. I love Miguel's. If you want to find Jürgen, if you're looking for Jürgen. Don't, no, I'm not there. Go to Miguel's. Don't He's go having there. a margarita. Here's the thing. Can we talk about the fact that when we go out to eat, Date night, Jürgen talks to everyone but me. What? It's true. That's not true. It's like he talks to the waiters it's... and the waitresses. He gets people saved. He invites them to church. In fact, most of the people that we have invited she's already to church. Saved. It's true, I am. So it's like, let's go out for a nice meal together. No, 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 no. Jürgen walks in and he's immediately having deep and meaningful conversations with the wait staff and the manager. And I'm just sitting there, just listening in. It's true. He it's walks in, he's living his best life. I'm not. He doesn't know a stranger. Mm. So Miguel's, you're going to okay. be there. At, you'll well, find I, him at Miguel's talking to the waiters and waitresses. Yeah. No, I, lo I, I really love Miguel's. Their, their margarita, yes, but they have this, this corn with queso. Yes. And salsa, dear Jesus, it's like that, they give that out for free. They give that out for free, and so that's free anyway, and it's it's just awesome. So that's my new favorite go to, and inexpensive, great my atmosphere. Cutie. I go there with my Bible, with my um, notes, and I just allow because I have a hundred thousand thoughts, and mm. I just find a margarita helps me to allow the thoughts to clear. Oh yes, what would Jesus? Sorry do? about that. Love that. Don't be sorry. Oops. Now, about being a father. Talk about yes. um, about being father, a father mm. and the importance of it. Now, that's a broad question, but what All a right. significant, profound question <clears throat> in this time. If, if you would have said to me in Bible school that uh, your God is going to use you as a father, I would have gone, you know, what a, what a pathetic prophecy. I'm going to pay someone to give me a decent prophecy <sighs> um, because I had such... such um, brokenness around being fathered myself. Right. And that's because my father never gave his father the opportunity to maybe um, father him properly or uh, he ran away from home because of how abusive his father was. So if I felt like there was one area that 
God would give me a pass, it would be in being a father. And yet I found that the one area that God has uh, kind of required of me, and it's the area of a father, I never, I'll never forget a man who was maybe a year younger than me, came up to me at a men's conference, like just broke down, was weeping, sobbing into my shoulder Aww. and looked me in the eye and said, I just want you to know, I see you as uh, a father. I see you as a father. And it was so, yeah, it was so overwhelming because I'm like, we're almost the same age. Like, you know, wow. see me as a brother, see me as a role model, as a mentor, but he used the word father. And that's when I realized God was not giving me a, a, a free pass. Yeah. If you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah was a freaking mess. It was a mess of debauchery, perversion, wickedness, oppression of the poor. All of those things go hand in hand. And when God wants to overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah, he doesn't send in an army, he sends in a father. Abraham. He sends in Abram, yes. exalted father. Because the way that you overthrow wickedness is through righteousness. And the way that you uh, overthrow illegitimate is through legitimacy. And so Abraham is a legitimate father. He carries the spirit of a father, the heart of a father, the anointing of a father. And the, the rejection of God in the world is the rejection of our father who art in heaven. So there's a whole lot more, but the number one problem in the world today is not skin color. Right. The number one problem today is not the, the level of melanin in skin. The number one problem today is fatherlessness. Wow. You know, uh, if you look at the 91% of People in prison come from father absent households, has nothing to do with the yes. backgrounds, has nothing to do with the communities, the skin color, the race, the ethnicity, born on the wrong side of the tracks, Social blue state, status. red state, has nothing to do with that, has the number one determiner is, is there a father present? The devil knows this and he hides it. And we have a lamestream media so let, that aids Let me ask that. you this before we go down the lamestream media <laughs> river. <laughs> Let's, let me ask you this. If there are mums, dads watching today and they're feeling convicted because they're not parenting well, what would you say would be the one thing you could say to all the dads out there right now to help them be a more effective father? You know, the, the the truth is, I would I would honestly say that I live with um, uh, a, a level of continual second guessing. And, you know, myself. I, I I would never say that I feel like I was a brilliant father to Jordan, to Ashley, to Tommy, to Zoe. I I feel like uh, there's a standard, and I always fall short. So. I would say never stop trying. The greatest thing that, that God really spoke to me is just being present. They've, they've done, they've done um, experiments where they had a father just sitting in a lounge chair in the lounge reading the newspaper. Like the kids cannot even see his face because it's behind a newspaper. Wow. But they, they, they uh, put all these monitors on the kids, on their heart and everything, and their adrenal levels, their anxiety levels were all low and they were in incredible peace wow. just because the father was present. present. Then when they removed My the father, gosh. there was like an anxiety and an, an uncertainty around them and all the levels were spiking in them. The father didn't speak. The father didn't say. The father didn't lead. He didn't caress. Now, that's not to say that, hey, I get a free pass. I don't need to encourage. Just I don't need to love. There. I don't need to speak. So number one is just you being present in the home is wow. unbelievably powerful. So don't discount that. Incredible and then number two, faith. I would say that um, a father shapes the worth and the strength of his children by the words that he speaks. There is nothing more powerful for a child to hear than I love you and I'm proud of you from a father. Yeah, baby, that's so good and so true. You, mm. you need to preach mm. a message on that because that's so incredible. Mm. Do you remember when Tommy was a little boy and mm. he was um, really our only child that loved to play on his own, like very happy mm. with his own company? Mm. And he would be upstairs with his Thomas the Tank Engine train table for hours. And he would every now and then we'd he'd be upstairs, we'd be downstairs, we'd just hear, Mom, Dad, and we go, Yes, Tommy. He'd be like, just checking. So basically just checking that you're there. 
Like I just, I'm playing, I'm happy, Security. I'm doing my thing, mm -hmm. but I just want to know that my mum and dad are there. So beautiful. Yeah. All right. Why don't you do the moonwalk on stage while preaching anymore? Done. That's an invitation taken. Bam. Doing it. He'll Thank be doing you. it this Sunday. Thank you, Karen Patrick. How do you personally sustain longevity in ministry? How do you stay the course? Uh, gosh, there's a, there's a few, but the first one is it's, it's um, just always keep the basics or the fundamentals as the most important things. So there are so many rabbit holes and there are so many demands and so many different paths that you can go down. But I found that for, for us, I realize I want one wife for life. And so Leanne and I start the day together and we start the day reading our Bibles. And I just find that, it, that uh, it's become such a habit that if I'm not with Leanne having a coffee, and reading my Bible, I, I feel unsettled in the day. I feel like something's Something broken and undone. missing in the day. Mm -hmm. And I find that that every morning, the first book that I read, the first things that I read mm -hmm. is the scriptures, and it gives God the chance, which happens more often than not, to kick my booty where I need it, to challenge me. But more often than not, these days, it's, it's very prophetic, it's very reassuring. And so I just think that just keeping the basics, you know, loving your wife, loving God, loving your life. And then I would just say, um, as the ministry grows, understand that you've got to do more of less. Mm. You've got to do more of less or less of more. So what that means is that I could be in a hundred meetings. I could be in a, and I could legitimately have excuses why I'm so busy that I'm now neglecting my marriage, neglecting my family, neglecting my health, saving the world because the world needs me. And I think that um, just allowing team, raising teams up, raising and equipping people around about you to carry vast and weighty portfolios um, is is so essential. So I I have never felt further from burnout today with 10,000 people in, you know, calling Awaken Church their home than I did when, you know, we had a youth group of just a few hundred people. Right. Um, because of just the lessons learned. So I love surfing, I love exercise, and for my head, because I, I need to, I need to continually be hearing from God, I find that uh, I'm in less meetings, not more meetings. And so, yeah. you know, I just think that that would be and then that. vacations. One thing that we did not do well this year was vacations. But I remember Pastor Phil Pringle saying the first thing you put on your calendar is your vacation. It was such a mind blowing yeah. revelation because when we're in the the uh, almost of God, the assemblies of God. Uh oh, um, not. Uh, it was all all work and you no know play. play was you felt guilty for having play time. Whereas Pastor Phil says put your vacation in first, build your build your life around it. And if I look back, I yes. would say that it, it, it really helped save marriage, save family and save us. M most pastors have a breakdown or most pastors have an affair or do something stupid, not because they're sinful and evil, but because they were burnt out, tired and weary. Wow. You never make your best choices when you're fatigued. Right. When I'm really, really hungry, I won't wait till I get home to eat. I'll see a Burger King or a McDonald's and I'll pull in there. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards yep. I regret afterwards. I'm like, man, why did I supersize that? Man, I feel, you <laughs> like know, now, pig. now I've got to run for the next seven days to burn off what I just ate. I just yes. ate 10,000 calories. It wasn't, it was just because I had so, uh, so unproductively yeah. planned my day that I did not create time for me to eat nutritious and well so I ate junk and I think wow. that's 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 probably a good good under good analogy to understand that if you know if you're not looking after yourself properly then you'll be susceptible and vulnerable I agree I agree and I would add to that also mm -hmm. and and you would agree with this to, to um, maintain longevity in ministry you have to be really good at forgiving mm -hmm. and getting over mm -hmm. offenses mm -hmm. and I think that takes a lot of past yeah, I think there, there was another a... question on that that's why I didn't um, oh you didn't jump okay in on sorry that. well I won't I won't go there then okay what is the best thing his wife does for him mm -hmm. Her smile, her encouragement, she loves me. Her wisdom is incredible. Uh, those things aren't, but that um, 
she uh, she's so funny. She's so mischievous. One of the worst things she does, if I can flip that, is she used to wow. sing this this Aussie song that we learned in school, but she would do it with this most annoying click, click dink, go dink. the shears boys click click which click. is a song we all learn it's a it's a sheep shearing song and uh but she would do the kadink 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 and yeah i'm gonna oh learn gosh, it yeah, don't and learn add, don't learn i'm it. gonna it's add evil. the recorder to it just to make it extra i'm telling singing you singing and the recorder it's the wow. soundtrack in hell when you arrive in hell there's a dink dink da dink Ding, ding. That's the, anyway. Ding, so. ding, 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 <laughs> oh ding, ah! ding, 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 ding,
So putting on the, the, the breastplate of righteousness, I know that I'm doing the right thing in the eyes of God. And this always, if you can do the right thing in the eyes of God, it just helps you process. Father, forgive them. They know what they do when they're stoning Stephen. He said, Father, don't yeah. hold this sin against them. They know not what they do. Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. When you know that you're doing the right thing before God. So don't do the right thing before men. Do the right thing before God. And then the men who do the right thing before God will come to your aid. And the men who are doing the wrong things before God will be the ones throwing stones and spears. So you get a lot of you get a lot of people firing back at you on mm. Instagram. Mm. Um, what would you tell people who are in a similar situation when they get pushed back? Some of it's respectful, sure. but most of your critics mm. are not. No. So how would you respond? Do you ignore them? Do you mm. do you clap back at them? I have a really good wife because I, I I think I've done it all wrong. I think I've gone into arguments with with look here's what I found you can't argue with idiots and uh and I used to post that but Leanne said that doesn't help but uh but it's a truth it's just a truth you cannot argue with any the Bible says you know um uh, correct a fool lest he be wise in his own eyes and then it says don't correct a fool lest you share in his folly so it's kind of like well which, which one, one is, is it? it it's like it's a contradiction wow and basically what the what the Bible is saying look if you don't say anything they're going to think they're right but if you say something, you're in danger of them dragging you into the gutter and fighting you in the gutter. And no matter how it looks, you're going to get mud on you. So what I try to do is I try to assess, do, is this person asking because they genuinely Genuine. want to learn, see, perceive, hang on, right. hang on, why are you saying well, I'm over here? And uh, But usually, unfortunately, usually it's not. Usually if, if, if somebody's hate... Uh, overrides their love of the truth. And and you'll see a theme, and I just want to encourage you, go all the way through, do a, a, a study on love of the truth, love of the truth. The, the Bible says these people perish. These are the people who end up in hell. These are the people who go to a lost eternity. The people who the love of the truth was not in them. Mm. Then if you look at Romans 1, the people who became... Uh, candidates for massive deception, it says, because they did not love the truth, God gave them over. Wow. So, so what we're seeing right now in our world is people that do not love the truth. And you'll always see the people that don't love the truth, hate springs up. And right. so for me, it's very, very easy. So a MAGA hat uh, doesn't produce hate. It just reveals where it is. It just reveals who's got it. It just bring brings it out. And so, um, yeah, I would just say getting back to the, the question, you know, don't say nothing to a fool and they think they're wise in their own eyes. Say something and be in danger of, you know, being dragged into the curb. Only respond to people that genuinely want to know. Otherwise, mute, you know, block, you know, delete, whatever. But don't don't let it get to you. There's so much haterade out there. Yeah. And uh, and we're not the party of hate. We're not the people of hate. We don't foster hate, but I will challenge it. Yeah. And I will expose Beautiful. it. I will call it out. Yeah. Um, because God is love. Yeah. And anybody who hates his brother but says he loves God, and that's one of the things that I've seen these Christians, and I'm like, wow, you 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 have no idea how precarious the position is you're in because you say you love God, and yet one John says anybody who says I love right. God yet hates his brother and I'm telling this vitriol you got some hater aid in there mm. uh, is a liar and, and is not born again God and is, is deceived him. has deceived themselves yeah. so it's so true very good what would you say to a cheating husband who has walked away from his family a cheating husband who has walked away from his family whatever the devil told you you're going to find you ain't going to find right. and the saddest thing is that that the price that you have paid for, for whatever your new piece of crumpet's going to be like, the price that you have paid, the loss of respect from your children, the loss of the memories with your bride. If you would have weeded the garden of mm. your marriage bed, right. you wouldn't be looking for greener pastures elsewhere. Every marriage requires the weeding of, of the gardens, the removing of thorns and thistles and the things that choke the life. And uh, that's why 68% of second marriages end in divorce. Why is that? Because I brought my same jackass ways with me to this new field and 
because I didn't weed the last field, I wasn't weeding this field. And I was just here to eat the fruit. No, no, you got to, any garden requires weeding, requires tendering. I mean, we just finished a landscape project. There's probably not an afternoon I'm not out in my yard right. pulling out weeds. And I actually enjoy it. I like pulling, pulling out, weeds. out weeds. That shouldn't watering, be growing there. Fertilizing, yeah. dealing with the gophers. And let me just say that gardens grow best with fertilizer. And you know what fertilizer is, right? It's when, it's when the fertilizer hits the fan. And so, uh, you know, fertilizer happens could be a t shirt. And so you say, oh man, there's so much fertilizer in my marriage. Exactly. God uses fertilizer to make things grow even richer and even wow, better. Wow, how good. So, so most people run when fertilizer hits the fan, but you need to understand, hey, let's get it off the fan and let's plant it around the things that we want to flourish and grow. Wow. Yogi, you are so amazing. All right. Well, quick, I'm married to you. Kim. Well, easy question. Uh -oh. Quick question. Where is your favorite place to surf in the world? Oh, in the world, definitely uh, latitude zero in um, Indonesia. Yeah, Indonesia, just off Sumatra. Stunning, beautiful water, fish, reefs, the most Coconuts. perfect waves. Didn't you have a fresh coconut? Yogi went on a fresh boys coconut. Trip. Yeah, but you got to be careful. You can't stand under coconut trees because the number one cause of death in that area is falling coconuts. True story. Wow. And I was standing under a coconut tree, and then they, one of the natives said, "Quick, get away! What are you doing?" I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I'm in the shade, and like under coconuts. I'm like, "Crap!" And then literally, I walked away, and then boosh, a big coconut fell. Oh my gosh! Lands on your head, kills wow. you. I got 99 problems and I didn't think coconuts were one of them. Now I know better. Falling coconuts. Mm. I'll say. But Governor, you... Governor Newsom says to stay inside in case of falling coconuts. Yeah. And don't sing and worship. That's and right. And we need to lock down all the bars. <laughs> now don't give him any ideas. Gyms. He's probably watching and writing that down. That'll be the next thing he sends out from his tower. All right. What can we do as wives to encourage our husbands to not lose faith in a time of uncertainty? Say that again, what can we do? What can we do as wives to encourage our husbands to not lose faith in times of uncertainty or hardship? Yeah, what, what does I, a man I, I think don't, don't underestimate the power of cheerleader. Yeah. You know, um, he, he needs more encouragement than what you think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet one of the easiest defaults is, so you know, death and life's in the power of the tongue. So I would say death is nagging and life is cheerleading. And so it's, it's a husband is already overwhelmed. He's already feeling the pressure of there's a loss of income. There's a loss of opportunity because of this freaking draconian lockdown and the shutdowns and COVID. So he's already carrying a level of stress, trying to pay the bills, food on the table, be a provider. Uh, a, a man's self image and self worth is tied to what he does. God created the, the, the garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed to tend and to keep it. So man is a doer. Then God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a helper suitable. So he puts Adam into a sleep, pulls out a rib and creates the woman. The woman is companion. She's relational. The man is missional. The man is a doer. He gets his worth, his value from what he accomplishes, what he does. A woman gets her worth and her value from relationship, him listening to her, him taking her out, him asking her questions, him responding to her. So when a woman is nagging at what's not done and you still haven't fixed that, and when are we going to, and so that that is that erodes any confidence that he has. The greatest thing is even if there's something that needs fixing and something that needs attention, uh, sandwich it in you I just want you to know thank you for being a great provider thank yeah. you for being a great leader thank you for being yeah. a great husband you know is there anything I can pray for right now that you're carrying all this pressure and all mm. this stress wow. I want you to know I'm in your corner thank you um, you know I, I know that you it's on your bucket list. Is there anything I can do to fix the leaking tap? Is there anything I can do to get the lawns mowed? Is there anything I can do to get the fence repaired? Is there anything I can do to replace the light bulb? Like you are so amazing, like encourage him. Yes, good. And I apologize for all the times I haven't. <laughs> she hit me in the head was, with the fry pan. I was getting Maybe. convicted. No, I didn't. I what? didn't do that. She Not lately to. anyway. She wanted to. All right. 
We need quicker answers because we have uh -oh. like a minute. Uh -oh. Okay. What advice do you have for a woman who is going through an unwanted divorce and she fought with all she had? So we're talking about a discouraged, heartbroken woman here. What could you say to her from a pastor's heart right now quickly? Oh, golly. Um, you know, I would say don't blame yourself. Um, a, a marriage requires two people devoted to one another, two people committed to one another. Um, even God had to write Israel a certificate of divorce, not that he stopped loving her, but she stopped loving him. Wow. And so she moved away from him. And so God had tried everything. He sent prophets. He did everything. And finally, he had to write her a certificate of divorce because her heart was no longer there. And I would just say that... Um, as you're going through that run to God, God is a healer of human hearts. It's what he does. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. Let God heal the brokenhearted and then understand that, that, that God is a God of love and companionship. It's not good that man should be alone. And sometimes one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's and right. you deserve to be treasured. You Amen. deserve to be loved. And all I would say is in the next one, if you make it your mission, to always minister to your spouse's heart. So my responsibility is the heart of my bride. What's, what is, I, I'm winning if I'm looking and listening to what is Leanne's heart's desire? What are the desires of her heart? How can I fulfill them? And if you have a husband and a wife and they make it their mission to fulfill one another's heart's desires, divorce will never even enter the conversation, will never even the fray. We, we, it's not even it's not even a thought. It's not even an an entertaining thing because we are so devoted to one another's hearts. We are so devoted to meeting one another's hearts' desires. We we live for that, and so like we have a great marriage because of that. And so I would just encourage you that hey, don't beat yourself up on what went wrong. Take your heart to God. Let God heal it. But then learn from that and understand that God is a God of restoration. The best one is that your heart, your husband has a heart change. If that doesn't happen, that God will have a man out there. Amen. Who is looking Think for somebody like you. Think of the story of Ruth also. Read the story of Ruth. Her redemption mm. story is one that still speaks mm -hmm. and one that I've seen happen in the lives of so many yeah. women. She experienced such loss, but as she followed with God at great mm. personal cost, mm. it was amazing the doors of opportunity that God opened for her. So we've got so many more questions. I don't think we're going to be able to answer them. Oh my gosh. All right. I want to end with this one. We've got, we're going to go for a couple more minutes and then will you do a part two with us? Part two. Because I literally Done. had like 50 part questions. Two. There's no way we can get through them. Part this, no, actually I'm not even going to, that one is what? way too, what? I can't even. You can't even? I can't even go there because that's like a 10 minute answer. Okay. All right. What qualities do you highly recommend a man should value? In, we'll end with in that himself one. or in, well, let's in let's society, do both. Let's do three and... minutes. Let's say what should he value in himself and what should he value in All right, the... a mate, someone. Who's okay. Well, for. let let me say the first the first value. This is found in the book of Proverbs. It says the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea that just me walking in righteousness and integrity causes causes a supernatural blessing to be on my children. So my eldest son just had his third promotion, promotion in the space of a year. Go, Jordy! He married, you know, the woman of his dreams. My second son Beautiful married girl. the woman of his dreams, married into an, an unbelievable family. Family, yeah. Like, and, and so... I couldn't coordinate that. I couldn't script that. I couldn't yep. purchase that. I couldn't. That's right. But because I, I, from a young Christian, read that scripture that a righteous man walks in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. And, and the word integrity comes from uh, integral, to integrate, means to make one. So the devil is the great divider. Any house divider cannot cannot stand. Right. So what I found is the devil is always trying to tell me that I can have a public life and then a very, very secret private life. Ooh. But it's it's a division and division always leads to destruction. Right. So David wrote in the Psalms, unite my heart to fear your name. Then I will teach sinners in the way. Right. And so I would say the first value is integrity. 
uh, what is the definition of integrity? That what I say, I do. What I say, I do. So God is the epitome of integrity. So we can, we can bank on his word, that God is not a man that he should lie, that God's word never returns to him void. It always accomplishes that for which he sends wow. it forth. Yes. So God never promises something. He has no intention to, well, I was just promising. Right. I wasn't. So God will always, you know, and so if you say, I'll be there at 10 o'clock, be there at 10 o'clock. If you say, I'm going to give this amount, give that amount. There have been many, many times where in the, the heat of the emotion of the moment, I was, you know, impassioned. I said, oh, we're going to give X amount of thousands of dollars. And then afterwards, I'm like, shoot, what the hell was I thinking, man? But now I'm snared. The Bible says snared. a man is snared. A man is snared by the words of his mouth. That's right. And so integrity, if, if you just have integrity, everything else, it's unbelievable. Everything else will fall away. There's a price for integrity. You know, and with integrity is truth. With integrity is honesty. With integrity is valor. Uh, you know, with integrity is courage. You know, all of those, all of those things. So I would just say, just start on that. That's, that that'll give you enough homework. If you just make integrity character, your, your priority, everything else will flow from there. And I love that. And actually that is unisex that works for men mm -hmm. and women. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we mm -hmm. constantly uh, strive to do. I, I never want to say something that I don't mean and say something that I don't deliver on. And I think mm -hmm. that's super, super important because mm -hmm. that is the character of God. Yeah. He's a promise keeper. Mm. Well, I love you. Thank love you. you. We're going to come back and we're going to do part two with part Yogi, two. my handsome lad. Mm. And um, what else do we want to say in closing? Love you so much. Didn't you and say you want me to do something in closing? Do I? Did you? No, I thought you said, was I going to pray for somebody or no? You should no. pray. Absolutely. Let's right. seal it in prayer. We're a little okay. over time. but let's, Okay. Father, we yeah. just thank you for the beautiful ladies who are watching on this Cherish yes. TV. And I pray, Father God, that every yeah. lady right now would receive into her spirit that you are God's daughter, which makes you a princess. Mm. And if yes. your life does not reflect that your heart says you are cherished, you yes. ought to be cherished yes. by your parents. That's why we're so anti-abortion. Because... Mm. Abortion is the antithesis of cherishing that That's gift right. that yep. is in the womb. Yeah, You should be cherished. You should be cherished by your husband. You should be cherished by your children, cherished by your family, cherished in your workplace. God's will for you is for you to live a cherished life. And I thank you, Father, for my cherished warrior princess <laughs> yeah. who heard that word from you and has determined that the greatest life you can live is that where you realize that you are cherished. And I want you to know, ladies, you are cherished by God, by us, and uh, by all those who love God. God bless you. Amen. Yes, we love you, everyone. We'll see you next week, 10.30 a.m. for another Cherish Conversation. But we'll see you actually Sunday. We're opening our new campus in San Marcos. If you're in that area, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., we'd love to see you there. Another Awakened Campus in San Diego. So exciting what God is doing. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye.